Thank you for joining me. I'm in the book of First Chronicles, the very last chapter, chapter 29. This particular passage is uh, a prayer and uh, the last events of the life of David uh, from one perspective. Uh, in First Kings, we have uh, the last days of David from another perspective. And some of, some of these things we have to reconcile because in verse 22 of this particular passage in 1 Chronicles 29, it says that they made Solomon king a second time. So the, the story, the way the story plays out apparently is that David was old. This is in 1 Kings chapter 1. And he was in bed, and they, they brought to him uh, uh, Abishag, who waited on him and uh, tried to help him get warm and uh, comfortable. And uh, during that particular time, his son Adonijah sought to usurp the kingdom. He, rec he thought that David was, was going to die and wasn't going to be able to uh, execute his will to make Solomon king. And so Adonijah tried to um, uh, jump, the, jump the event and he tried to become king himself. Now, we recognize that David uh, stood against that, and there was this division in the government of Israel and Judah at that time, that, uh, and David on one side was planning to make Solomon the next king, Adonijah was trying to usurp that, that position. So in, at the end of Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, at the end of First Chronicles, where I am today, this particular passage says that they made Solomon king a second time. So apparently what happened was that David realized that when Adonijah tried to uh, usurp the kingdom, that there may be other of his sons that would try to do that. But he knew specifically from God that it was Solomon that was supposed to be the next king. And so David created a, a, a very important coronation and uh, made sure that the whole of the nation knew that Solomon was king. Now, I don't suggest to you that it had all of the pomp and circumstances that we're seeing uh, as I record this in the, uh, after the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the coronation of King Charles III. All of that is just, a, these are just figureheads. But the reality is that it was important that the people know who the king was. The people needed to know that, the God, that, that God had specifically given to their beloved King David the, um, the, the, the promise that Solomon would be the next king. And they, uh, that they had great assurance in that particular coronation. And that's why this particular passage says that he was coronated and crowned the second time. They made him king the second time. Now, it's important that we as people in this uh, generation recognize the importance of the history of Israel. The things that are recorded in the scripture are true. The historical events are true. There is a great deception that is happening in uh, in our world today, and the enemy of our souls would try to undermine the integrity of much of the historical narrative of the Old Testament. But it is true, and we need to understand that it is true. One day, we may not be able to reconcile it in our day, but one day it will be reconciled, and the things that are written there will be seen to be true. And that's, that's important that we understand that. If you can't trust the history, you can't trust the theology. That's an important principle here. Jesus, when uh, he was, uh, when the men brought to him a paralyzed man, and they lowered him down, and Jesus forgave the man's sins, and the 
Pharisees and the Jewish leaders around him were asking, who has the power to forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said to them, which is easier, to say to the man, rise up and walk, or to say your sins are forgiven? Well, it's easier to say the sins are forgiven because that's unseen. No one knows for sure. But if Jesus would tell the paralytic to rise up and walk, it was in that context evidence that Jesus had also forgiven this man's sin. And so that's the point here with history and theology. The history is true. We can trust the history. And because we can trust the history, which we can verify and will be verified, we can trust the theology there as well. Father, we thank you for the grace that you've shown to us. We thank you for the truth of the scripture, and we recognize that it's under attack constantly by the enemy of our souls. But we know that you are true, and we, we trust in that. And we thank you for those that have gone before who have put their trust in you, and you have been faithful to them, even as they have sought to be faithful, imperfectly, but faithful to you. So, Father, work in us to that end as well. May we serve you. May we know your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name, amen.